You make a lot of noise, little girl. Anywho, there's two things I need to talk to you about before we get started. Sort of a disclaimer. One is, my place was in a flood. Uh, I, that area there, the uh, ground gets flooded really bad. I'll show you a quick clip of uh, what happened. And that is the reason I, I had to put these big posts in. I wanted to put big posts in. So it should alleviate the pressure when the floods come again, because they will come again. These posts are anywhere between one point four in the ground up to two meters. It just depends where. And this, um, on the other end, it'll be two meters deep. Here it's a bit shallower and the posts will be around, around about one and a half meters in, thereabouts. Do you have to do that? No, if you're building a fence, this is because I have a problem. If you don't have a problem, you can put it out 0.8 in the ground. Just depends. Um, I've talked to people who breed professionally, deer, and their posts are in the ground about uh, 0.8, and they are about anywhere between 18 and 22 out of the ground. Now, the professional deer breeders, the ones I've met, they can get away with 18, 1900 because they've got a large area and they're less under pressure. Here I've got a lot of vehicles and stuff going by, so I went to it the, the max I could. Uh, in the States, I believe they use work on uh, 10 feet. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is it translates to. Uh, mine are, were meant to be 18. These ones are 21. Uh, and a lot of the others are 22 and 24. Just depending if the ground slopes going down or whatever. It, you don't have to be as elaborate as I am. Uh, I will talk to you about what the average person needs to do compared to me. I have goats. That's the other thing. Goats are, well, they say if you pour water over a fence and it gets through, that means it's not goat proof. <laughs> a little exaggerated, but goats will find a way. And since I, instead of just having ring lock, I, I you can get away with ring lock, most people. The professionals just use ring lock but I put wire behind it, strands of wire uh, at certain heights because goats will rub up against it, goats will push on it and push on it trying to get the grass on the next paddock. You know, the grass is always greener. And so that's the other problem. Now, this is the second thing I want to talk to you about. When building a fence, really truly think about what you think you'll have in the future. I thought I was just going to have chooks and goats. So I made my fences, like in there, about 14, 15, actually there's 16, but about 1400 high is what I worked it on. And that's fine. But then I decided to put goats. I had to put star pegs in, that cost more money. And I had to put another lot of wire on the top and that cost more money. So if you can really think about it beforehand, what you want to do, you'll save yourself a lot of headache and you just build it from scratch once and it looks a lot better too okay so let's come along I'll quickly show you a few things and uh, I'll put the fence up and show you real quickly what you need to do so there you go there's my orchard fence it's you can see it's an old fence and I've put uh, star pegs in and uh, raised them up and run the wire and just in the process now of pulling it down it's about uh, 35 meters or so this is in my I this is where I run my deer I've just pulled the deer out of here I just pulled the deer out of here uh, all my fruit trees I have this is I call this my stone fruit orchard but there is papaya here and there's guava and uh, there's lychees and Fuji and but peaches and plums and apricots and whatnot. They're in both the paddocks. I've moved all the other animals into there. That's where my darlings are. And they're on the hill as well and all that as you can see. So 
this fence is coming out. There's what the fence roughly looked like before. And now the fence is gone. What I've got to do now is just mark out where I'm going to put the post so it's nice and even. I'm reasonably lucky that the ground is level so I don't have to make adjustments. This is the last post going in. For your information, when you drop posts in, it, uh, professionals, they vary between five to seven meters apart with about 125 to, uh, yeah, around 125 posts in thick width and height, like I said, about 2200 high. But the posts are uh, 125. Now, that's approximately, what's that, four, five inches. So the posts, I tend to make them three meters apart because I'm in a floodplain, and the water comes right through here. I want to show you a clip of the water coming through right here. Now, it knocked all this fence down. So I'm going extra close, three meters. But professionals tend to do it five to seven meters. Uh, yeah, because you don't need to waste blooming money on posts when they don't need to, because you've got ring lock and uh, yeah and run wire in it now internally fences i tend to run five to seven meters external i do three meters that's just me so the posts i tend to make them three meters apart because i'm in a floodplain, and the water comes right through here i want to show you a clip of the water coming through right here now it knocked all this fence down so I'm going extra close, three meters. But professionals tend to do it five to seven meters. Uh, yeah, because you don't need to waste blooming money on posts when they don't need to, because you've got ring lock and uh, yeah, and run wire in it. Now internally fences, I tend to run five to seven meters. External, I do three meters. That's just me. Well, viewers, next thing to do, the post. Now we've got a post here, my gate is there, that's got to be a little distance from the gate there, so it makes it easier, and a little, uh, what do you call it, access gate there. So this post here is going to be the main post near the gate, and down the very end of that uh, corral, I'm going to put the other uh, post, the main post. So what I do is I make that the height I want it to go. You can make it whatever height you want it to be. You can do any height you want. I would suggest if you're doing deer, you got to allow 18, it's actually 1830 here. Um, I would suggest 18 to have a little bit of play on the bottom. And that leaves how high you want to go. Now, even if you're not going to be doing deer straight away, leave yourself the extra space, allowing minimum 2100. I'm going 2250, 22, it's where I like to go. And what I will do is you work out where you want to be at the very top because you put the top wire first because it makes it so you don't tangle your wires. Believe me, if you do it the other way, they get tangled all the time. So you put a wire at the top where you want it to be, put one at the very end, and when you do the strain, don't go over tight because you'll use little ratchets. If you do it over tight, what will happen is uh, you'll pull your poles a bit. Now, I've got mine a long way in the ground. I don't have that much problem. But if you only go 800, 900 in the ground, you can have a little bit of problem. So what I do is just do it just tight enough after it's all the concrete's gone hard. If you're not using concrete, let it put the wire on, tighten up a bit. Um, if you don't want to use the wire, you can't pull the wire tight, use a uh, laser level and then you work your height up there and you get the laser and run it along and you find out exactly where all they are make a mark 
and that way you can pull the wire up to that mark and you've got it exact. My way is not exact because you tend to get a little bit of sag in your wire still. Don't worry about that. The next thing is you work down the pole, making marks on the post to what you want. Now, like I said before, if you've got the gap there, you set up for next time, you've got a problem, you can just, uh, you want to go higher, you've got the gear to do it. You've got the, already the pole. Don't do what I did. Didn't go high enough, and I had to add bits of um, star pegs, or what do you call them, T-posts in, and to make, the, uh, make it work. And it's not, it's not as attractive. All right, so we'll do that now, and then I'll show you what. Okay, here it is. Here's my post. I'll move back and so you can see it. There is my post. Now, this is me, not you. It's up to yourself. But with my post, mine are 22.50 out of the ground. You can go 21, you could go whatever. But by having the maximum length, you've got room to play. Up there, you can see, I think you can see it. See, there's a top mark right up the top there. That's set at uh, 22.50. The next one down is 60, uh, 160 less. The reason I've gone 160 is I'm putting a timber across to, uh, either side of the gate. That's, this is where my gate's gotta be right here. And this is the side post. Um, and so I'm gonna run the timber across there. And because it's 150, I went 160. Why did I do that? I just don't like the wire sitting under the timber. Now the next one's a 145 and 145. Why did I go those? Only because I wanted it so this bottom one was at 1800. That's when I have my mesh, my, um, uh, what do you call it, um, ring lock. From there to the ground, is, they're 1830 here. Your wire might be different wherever you are. And so I have 30 mil extra bit of sag on the bottom, a little extra to make it tight. Now, again, this is me, not you. I have goats, and they're rather vicious on fences. They'll keep pushing and pushing and pushing till they get what they want. Now, for that, goats are, you know, different heights, but I'm running that off 600 because it works well. Remembering, measure your um, ring lock to see what sizes they are. Some are much more smaller at the bottom and larger at the top. Mine are pretty well even, so... Um, if I go 600 up from the bottom, I'm pretty close to uh, the, one of the wires going across. The advantage of that is, is that when you can clip lock it, or you can use them J clips along it, all the way along it, clamped onto it, uh, you're right on the wire. The next one I set at 1200, because, hey, if you think about it, it's 1800. And so I just go six six and six that makes the 1800 it just suits me better so there you go why the next one because you've got bigger animals you've got deer and i'm making it so the little devils can't do it all right moving on this is what i use to put the uh, wire up i use roofing screws and these little clips that fold over so these little clips here and I'll just, I put a wire up there, just so you know how I do it. This is me, you might do a better way. I just wrap the wire around the post, do a couple of whirls around it, then I do a tight bunch, really tight if you can. And if you get too much wire, just wrap it like that. It looks a lot neater than going right up here. Okay, I'll put this up. So when I put a clip there, so that it doesn't slide down when I'm working with it. Makes life easier. And I use those same clips along all the posts there. So, now I've got the wire running along here. This is my main post. I'm gonna have timbers going across to this second post. The gap is not as big there as down there. They're three meters. This is 2.4 to here. Doesn't matter, you can do what you want. Now. Because there's posts there and it's in the way because you'll have wire there and you'll have timbers going across and be in the way, I will strain off that post, the main post, but I'll run the ratchet, these ratchets here. They're really good. In the old days, I used a gadget you had to pull like a little winch 
and uh, bunny for barbed wire, and it was a pain. These are really good. It's uh, you can come back and nip them up without having a lot of drama. Now, I will get past all these timbers and I'll put it out here somewhere. I roll them, try and keep them in a line so it looks pretty, and uh, all the way up and down here. So I'll show you that in a sec. Look, here you go. Here's the rat. Here's the wire. I've fastened it up there. I'm just going to show you on the ground. I'll put it through here. The reason I put it on this side first is because when you've got more wire to ratchet on. Sometimes you get too close to a post and, and you put it the other way, you've got hardly anywhere you can winch. So by putting it on here, it's better. There's something else you've got to make sure of. When you've cut this off, you haven't gone too far. So I've got plenty of room here, so I can go, I can put it about here. I'll put it about here. It's easier on the ground like this. I'll wrap it around like this. Now I'll just do a knot here. Not a knot, let's keep on winding it over itself. Now I'm going to have wire left over. That's okay, I'll keep that because it comes in handy tightening things off. Now I'd like to keep as much wire on this here as I can in case it snaps somewhere and you need a little extra distance. You can't get little gadgets that can join your wires, but it's nice to use the wire. So if you've got yourself plenty of spare, it's good. Go for a little whip around here again. I'm a bit of a sneaky bugger. I'll come back like this just to keep a little extra spare. Anyway, that's about it. What I'll do now is I'll come up the pole and connect it up and I'll show you when it's finished. Oh, great little tool. Does everything. Right. So there you go. It's on there. Right down to over there. If you can imagine, like have a little bit of sag, just have a bit of a look down the wire. You see it sags maybe about an inch in the middle. Just lift up the middle, that'll take the straight, the problem out of the way. Well viewers, look up on the post there. The very top one, I wired up, clipped it. Next one down 160, whoops, wrong way. Yep, 145 and then 145. So, that's how I did it, down there. Now, for me it's different, I've got a flood situation. And because of that, the flood water is coming towards me, the way I'm facing across my yard, to the posts. Now, because it comes hard, and then build up a rubbish, builds up on the wire, uh, I've done, I put the wiring on the outside edge here. All right now the wire will fasten to here and with clips and if it gets floody enough it'll lift up like a skirt now the reason why i haven't done my my one here yet in the middle that's at the 1200 height is the flood through here doesn't get that high touch wood it usually comes through about a meter i've got it at 1200 and so what I'm doing is I'm going to put a wire on the outside of the um, wiring there, uh, of the, of the um, ring lock, and so that it'll hold the wire there, so the rest this will lift up, rather than lifting up to the very top. It'll lift up only halfway, just like a skirt. Okay. Uh, very bottom there, that'll where I'll fasten the uh, bottom of the uh, ring lock. And that one up there, I'll fasten the top of the ring lock. Okay, that's, a, I'll show you that next. Okay, viewers, see I'm putting the ring lock up. Couple of little tricks. One is, if you don't wanna use this wire and you just wanna run the ring lock, I honestly believe you should run a wire at the 1800. The reason is, it's easier to clip to it than just stretch it out and have it sag. So, 
I connect it on the fence here, around behind the post, that gives you a bit more strength. And you've got to hook it so that it, 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 these things can move. If you actually, I could probably push that sometimes and uh, make a little bit of a gap. So it, it's not welded, it's looped and they still move a bit. So anyway, I fasten it along here, fastening it, fastening it, and I'm fastening it at there, down on the middle, well that's actually 600, and down near the bottom, down there, I'm fastening it again. Once I've fastened along, the bottom one hasn't been screwed on, the others have. The reason is, so I can do this. And I'll get down low and show you. Oops, sorry about that. So I can do that and screw it down as low as I can. Now, the ground's not always perfect. And if you look there, there's a bit of a gap on here. That'll have to be filled up with dirt. But up here is what I was actually trying to achieve. That's just one little low spot. But just along there, it's got a 30 mil on the ground, which makes it harder for the goats to get their head under goats will find a way so that's why I'm doing that um, I think the reason I put a wire on the bottom again I can hook the little hooks over it and the uh, you it keeps it down makes it harder for the goat to lift it but if you're not having goats you're only having deer it's still not a problem but goats will go under fences I'm quite surprised and into my chook yard I left it about a foot and the goats and the deer were getting underneath I had to lower it a bit lower so the chooks could get out and the deer couldn't get in. Because they'll eat the leaves off my fruit trees, little devils. When they were young they didn't. As they're getting older they're eating anything, like a goat. Alright, there's my ring lock viewers. I'm sitting it up. My son is fastening it up. He's got a little, I'll show you in a second, a little gadget. I tell you a secret, when putting up the ring lock on the fence, it pays to put to have at least one wire on the top. It means it's got something to anchor to and clip to so it doesn't sag, looks better. Secondly, it pays to have a wire on the bottom if you're having goats. Makes it harder for it to lift it. Now this is a bit of a low section. I'll have to put some extra soil in there, but along there it's doing the right job. It's up right hard against the ground. But by clipping it to that wire, it makes it harder for a goat to lift it up. Now, if you're not doing goats, well, you can work, do what you want to do. But me personally, one at the top, one at the bottom. I've got one about 600, and I'll have one at 1200 on the outside, as I've told you before. Okay, um, this side post is a bit of a wonky one, but it's too much work doing that. So one day when I, it's, it's been pulled over because of that fence. One day we will fix it. Jamie, tell them what you're doing. Just, just clipping up uh, this wire. This, Show them uh, the little gadget. It just bends. It bends the metal either side and clips this ring lock against this tension wire. If you look, it uh, bends it around. Now yeah, that can be popped uh, if it's hit hard enough, but you put a lot of, we put them every three spots. And besides that, it's mainly to stop them when they rub against it. Normally the goat would be on this side of the fence and the goat would come up to here. And because it's at 600, the goats love to push against it, push against it to scratch themselves. They will see big bows up the fence where they've been rubbing on it. Well, by putting this, this one in the middle here at 600, they're rubbing against a hard wire and uh, it's less likely to buckle the fence and if they do a little bit of stretching on it you can just tension it up with that little tensioner i just shown you well now just so you get a perspective we've got the wire almost up we haven't pulled on it yet and uh what i'm going to do here the small thing i'm putting a um, access gate and um I put this pole up there and fasten it in the concrete and what I'll do is I'll put the posts in there evenly spaced all the way down and uh, that'll also keep the fence from pulling over. Well viewers, 
Episode's about over. All the posts are in. The wires up. The, the extra wires on the top are done. The posts hit, uh, done here. The gates on. The, the security access gates. Small gates done. The all the wires here done. It's sweet. The only thing I could possibly do, and I've just noticed it, is I could string an extra wire up in there. Yes, I think I will do that. Apart from that, it's all done. Catch you next time.